first things we want to know was how you got into beer and what interests you about it. Well, um, the first thing that got me into good beer was watching um, uh, the Today Show. And uh, Brian Gumbel was in Belgium and he was drinking Chimay beer and they went into how it was made by monks and how it was the best beer in the world. And I um, bought some and I tasted it and I really liked it. And I read about the fermentation process was on the back about how it's re-fermented in the bottle. That led me to buy a homebrew kit and start making my own beer. And then I quickly figured out that there were other people making better beer than I ever would. And so I gave up the homebrew and kind of homebrewing and started searching out local people who were making beer. So that's pretty much what got me into beer to begin with. Was, uh... Well, uh, growing up in Ohio, I drank nothing but Budweiser and major uh, beer, major producers of beer. And um, what I refer to as good beer would be a um, microbrew beer or craft beer where it's made by a small producer and they use all natural ingredients, like they use all malt, whereas Budweiser would, I don't want to rag on Budweiser, but they put in rice and other adjuncts. And these craft brewers use just malt, barley, hops, and water, and yeast. So they're pretty pure as far as their ingredients versus the major ones. Well, what, what happened was um, we had a beer bar. I had read about that Belgian beer, so we started carrying a few Belgian beers. And I went to a beer festival where there was locally made beer. And I tasted it and it was absolutely delicious, fresher than what you could get from Belgium or Europe. And I started uh, driving to these little breweries around the Bay Area and would pick up the beer and bring it here to the bar and expose people in San Francisco to these beers they've never had that are being made locally. And I built up relationships with these brewers so I would get beers that other people didn't have. And we became known as a spot where you could come and try new things that other people weren't carrying because I was totally into it. I would drive in my Honda Accord and go pick up beer and bring it, right? Because they didn't have distributors for these beers. All your distributors were run by Bud Miller Coors. These guys didn't have any room to get into the distributors, so there wasn't a network to get this beer. So I would drive around and pick it up from Boonville, from Devil Mountain, out in Walnut Creek. And so we became known as a place to have these beers. Plus the brewers were proud to have their beer showcased in San Francisco, where it hadn't been before. So we would get beers from them that maybe other people wouldn't get, or they'd make special beers for us. So um, it gave an opportunity as a showcase for a lot of brewers to get bigger than uh, their original starting thing. I mean, at, at one time, we were 10% of some breweries business selling their beer here you know, in one location. First thing with keg beers, you need a lot of refrigeration. Um, to care for the beer properly. And so we started with one refrigerator, then we had to add two more, then we added a walk-in for bigger storage, and then a second walk-in for more storage. Um, so really, physically, in the bar, it's keeping the beer cold and in good condition. An obstacle was education. We had people who came in and they would ask for a Budweiser. Well, we didn't carry it. And, you know, then it asked for a Miller, we don't carry it. Would you like to try this German lager, which is the same style of beer, but made with under the Rheinheitsgebot. So we would put that in front of them and they would like it. And then they'd come back in, they'd order another one of those tentatively, and then we would switch them to an amber. And that had more flavor, more body. And, and then we would transition them to something else. And now some of those customers are here 20 years later, and they drink the most extreme IPA you could imagine. So really the biggest obstacle was education because there were times when we first opened for the first two years that it was mainly people who had traveled to Europe. Um, we didn't have any tourists here. 
uh, and home brewers and people in, into beer. That was our core audience here. Like I said before, I, I, I think of it as a local bar, as a good selection of beer. There are regulars here, people travel from all over the world to come here to have the beer. Everything is really centered around the beer. We don't really do anything else. We have no food. Uh, although there are restaurants located all around where people can bring in their own food, and we encourage that. Um, but mainly I think it's a place where friendships are made, relationships, children are born. It's a community within, it, within itself, really, um, where you know you can come and maybe become part of the community and enjoy good beer and the good beer is something that most of the people come in the door have in common at least they can start talking about the beer or the different beers and then they become friendly on some other subjects you know that they might have in common why did we name it tornado well in 1966 if you can envision that uh the torn oldsmobile tornado um, was car of the year so it was the best design car and I have a 66 Tornado car and we decided to name the bar Tornado because it was going to be a well designed bar of the year I guess mm -hmm. although it took 20 years for it to become that <laughs>